Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East. Jerusalem, the most hotly contested real estate in the world. Judea and Samaria, condemned by the world as the West Bank. You will not see it in the media. Journalists try to hide it. Real stories about real people, fathers, mothers, children, families. These are the people of the heartland of Israel. Your journey with them continues with The Joshua and Caleb Report, stories from the heartland of Israel. All right, Nir Levy, it is my privilege, and I think this is, I'm ecstatic about doing this interview with you because I know your story, because you were one of the first men that I shook hands with, the first Israeli I shook hands with when I stepped into the Ben Gurion Airport, and I remember you brought me to your house here, and you just welcomed me, welcomed me into your home. And uh, you're the one who, sh who showed me the beauty and the love that these people on this mountain have. And uh, that's something that I'll always remember. I mean, that was 10 years ago now. But now I I I'm excited to sit here across from you and see what, what has happened over the years to get us to this point now. It's absolutely nothing, nothing other than Hashem that could really do that. So to start this off, I mean, I know you were like in the elite forces in the, in the IDF, you were, um, now you're a vineyard owner here, you've got a winery here, you've got a big visitor center here. And uh, I mean, let, let's go back to when you were like the beach boy, you know, the guy that was <laughs> riding his uh, you know, little moped with your surfboard under your arm and you're zooming down the streets of Petitikva. <laughs> and uh, as a little guy, because I believe we're gonna find something there that started you on this journey towards the mountains of Israel. So let's kick back to Petitikva and tell me about growing up there. In my life, I was I had the privilege that my father, Chaim, that's life also in Hebrew, he was taking us around in the world. And that deferred me already when I was a youngster from other Israeli fellow mates, fellow people from my class, from my neighborhood. Every three years, my father was a delegate for the government of Israel and we lived abroad. We lived in England for three years. We did another three years in Israel and later on we did another three years in the USA, in New York. But in New York, we didn't live there like a regular Jewish people that came and had their shul, their community, you know, their services and school back and forth. My father, he had this vision of taking us all around the U.S. And as a fifth grader, I remember him putting up our Chevrolet Impala station wagon, putting in the 80s all the stuff in and going for two months from New York to California, going all around the United States of America. And I'll tell you what, being there in Yellowstone, being there in all Bryce Canyon, in Grand Canyon, all those places that touch your heart real deeply. And in Israel still was a very, very young state at that time. Seeing the United States, seeing you on the 4th of July, all those fireworks going up and feeling these feelings with your nation as an Israeli, not as an American Jew, as an Israeli. A Jew coming into the land of the U.S. To, to, to have a good time in it, to tour it and to learn from it as much as possible. I think that's something that changed my heart also. Because to understand these things, to see God in big, in big Mother Nature, to understand it, when I came back later on to the land of Israel, and also giving small lectures to people in my Flatbush Yeshiva, in Flatbush, in Brooklyn, giving them uh, an Israeli paratroopers uh, kind of lecture. To, to, as, a, as a boy, just giving them, you know, a slideshow, showing them what's happening in Israel. It already put me in a, in a phase, in a place of being a bit different from others. Looking, having a, a, a special insight, maybe of the soul, of what's, what's for us to be and where are we at now. And that started my route as a youngster of course, also getting to this elite unit. I think if I was at that time, maybe an Israeli regular person and not living abroad and then coming again to the land of Israel it gave me a spirit of really wanting to give, a, a spirit of giving, a feeling up that I was filled up, like a cup, we fill it up and maybe it has some water going out, being filled up and later on wanting to give, to give others. And that's why I was recruited at that time after being a teenager, as you asked me, I had all kinds of things. I, I saw in the U.S. that you were surfing there in Malibu and, and, and California. At that time, we're talking 30 years ago or so, uh, people in Israel didn't even know what a surfboard looked like. You know, <laughs> so, so that was really, we, we, we were, you know, uh, individuals doing this sport. Today, everybody does surfing, there's schools of surfing like in the U.S. and You know, we have a nice sea here, Mediterranean Sea, but these 
uh, how do you say, wonderful excitements in life gave us a vision, gave me a vision, my family and myself, of, um, of the soul, of the soul of Israel. Leaving, a, leaving the matter a bit aside and going to the soul, understanding the soul. And then later on, if I go a bit back even in time, when I finished my army service and it was really tight mission, a really tight time, and going to uh, the Far East as an Israeli backpacker, okay, for half a year, backpacking the Far East, Thailand, Nepal, India, going back to Thailand after for half a year without a watch on, the, on, on my wrist, just getting the, the, the awakening by the sun and the evening time by the, you know, feeling, and I felt my, my uh, you know, us in, in life, we have our matters to deal with, and we also have uh, things that are unrevealed for us. We don't have time to search them, to go and search, be a searcher. That was my, 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 my uh, passion. I had a big passion in my heart to be a searcher, to search life, to go to the Garden of Eden, to understand where it all started from. So I walked in time. And when I understand it, I came back to my religion. When I came back to my religion, to my Orthodox homeland, my grandparents, understanding what they happened to them in the Holocaust, what brought them to the land of Israel, starting hardship in the land of Israel at the beginning of time, settling the land on the shorelines of the land, not going into the land, only sitting by the shorelines because the guys that came from Europe, they came from the shorelines. And they, you know, they did Haifa, they did Tel Aviv, they did all the regular places that today we live by. Later on, us youngsters, third generation, our parents grew also about that area. But later on, we wanted to go to the heartland of Israel. And I asked myself, what, like you asked me, Nir, tell me about the surfing time, tell me about the army service. All these things connected to be one. When I was sitting at my parents' house and my, I, I was living on a third store room and I had a small window like Noah, like Noah's window, going to the east from Kfar Saba. My father built us a house on a hilltop. So I had a lot to see from there. And I looked up there and I looked to the east and I saw the mountains of Shamron. And after my army service, in the, in the time of my army service, I got very much connected to the land of Judah and Samaria because I had the privilege of serving this area. So I got close to the landscape, to the people, to the sites, you know, so it, 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 it ran through my heart. But when I was after, uh, unrecruited, already out in my regular life, working a job, getting acquainted with the Torah, coming back to my roots, I looked from my father's and mother's house to the east and only 30 kilometers. The area of Shamroon, so vast, so big, so wonderful, untamed, wilderness of the land of Israel and also heartland. Heartland with all the Bible stories running through it from south to north. All our fathers walked through here. And when I looked at it and went from time to time, I had a motorbike a dirt bike and I would run through this area. It's very close. You know Israel already, right, Josh yeah, and Caleb? Yeah. You, you've been in Israel for a couple of years already. I'll say that. <laughs> and, and you understand societies in Israel. You understand places, people in the Negev don't act like people in the Shomron, people in the Golan act differently than people in Tel Aviv. A lot of areas. So these are the tribes. And I started to acknowledge this as an Israeli youngster. Had my bike and I was running around here learning Torah at this yeshiva, going to this yeshiva, getting a bit. And I had there a miracle that one of these rabbis told me near, you want to get settled, get married. <laughs> get married, don't bluff around. You want to play bachelor, go be a bachelor. You want to get married, you're going to be settling down. And that's what I did. I think it's, just, it's, just, it's extremely inspiring to hear your story every time I hear it from where Hashem brought you. Like you're, you're, you're young, like Caleb mentioned earlier, like you're, you're growing up, you're, you're, you got your surfboard, you're out doing this and you're, you're just living in your parents, you're, you're traveling the world, you've seen all this, but then you come back to the land. You come back to the land of Israel and you not only just come back and settle, you know, in, in Kefar Saba and in the, in, the, in the coast area, uh -huh. but you came back up here and you, you started life. You brought your family uh, here by faith, just stepping out, just like you described in the story of, and I, what I want to hear now, because I just think it's phenomenal where, where you're going and how you've done this. But I think the next just amazing part of your story is when you come to the heartland 
and you, you not only settle your house, but you begin to farm the land. A surf boy comes, not any farming background, and you begin to farm. And I think this is, this is where I want to really hear now, how did that happen? Okay. So I'm even before we're doing the cheers or something, yet we wait with the cheers. I'll tell you. I'll answer you exactly. Hashem told me to do so. And I'm not, I'm not saying it, you know, just as, you know, a story to tell. I'm saying it as something out of faith. Hashem told me, you're going to come up to the mountains and you shall plant the vines there. He talked to me and it was, and you can ask other people that remember this time. It was eight months after me and my wife Shira came to Har Bracha, me and Erez, we started eight months after to start planting our first vines together. Why? Because Hashem talked to me. Hashem spoke. He told me. He told me, Nir, go up to the mountains and go plant vines. That's what He told me. And this is not a secret to say. It's something very, very, you know, it looks maybe a bit weird. Looks, hey, how come? But this is what Hashem, and then today, I think in these modern times that we live in, people have all kinds of crazinesses, right? Good ones, bad ones, depends how you look at it. Well, that was my, my craziness. I came up to this mountain, a good craziness, mm -hmm. and Hashem spoke to my soul and opened up my ears and head and told me, Nir, you're going to come up to Har Bracha. You're going to go up to the offices of the government of Israel. You're going to come and, and knock on their door and tell them we have to do something with the land in Har Bracha. It's not going to be abandoned land anymore. It's going to be fertile land. This is what is supposed to be here. And they, it took time to persuade them. I wouldn't tell you. It took us eight months to persuade the government of Israel to start putting in a D9, a bugger, and start a bulldozer and starting bulldozing land. You know it, you're vineyard workers, big, big time. You know how to hold a vineyard. Just the work to make the place ready for planting is the biggest work there is to start. And we started that together, me and Eris. At that time, Hashem gave him the energies of more domestic, and he gave me the energies of more in, inside the offices and the government offices. And together, we, we joined forces together like Joseph and Judah. Mm. Yes, this is Mashiach times. We, we, yes, he knows it, Erez. We bonded together and we went on this project. And until we didn't see that it's coming up to life, we didn't leave it for a second. Later on, each one went to his way. It's, it's regular, it's, nature, it's natural also. But, but to start, we started together as mates, and, and, and we were mates, and, and Hashem gave us a big blessing. Hashem was looking for the hearts to start blessing the land here. So making, you can't leave the land barren for 2,000 years. It's, it's a disgrace. It's Rabbi Melamed talked to you about it. It's a disgrace. Uh, Hashem spoke to me, and I have to do this. That's it. And, I, he's, and in God's will and time, He's going to take care of it. He's going to take care of it because he sent me to do it. So if he sent me to do it, then there's something in back there that's happening, you know, that I even can't understand and see all the time. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's amazing that as well with the, you know, we're talking about the farming and all this thing, how God has blessed it abundantly and the winery and all this. What's the story of this place? The story of, of the, the blessing on the Mountain Visitor Center, okay, of the Har Bracha winery. It's called Blessing on the Mountain, and it's the same name in Hebrew. Bracha al Har, Blessing on the Mountain. Diner, restaurant, and visitor center. This place, when we put it up, they thought that we're doing, a, at the beginning, what did they call it? They called it an outpost. Uh, uh, an unlegal, an unlegal outpost. But it was 30 meters from the, from the, from our, uh, in the maps of the settlement also by the border lines that are bordered for us in the settlement lines and 30 meters from the from the gate of the settlement because we saw a lot of people coming up on this mountain to the Samaritans our neighbors by the city of Shechem 800 meters from here and we wanted to give them services you know we saw that it, they don't have any services no bathrooms no place to eat in so we said Let's start. And I was at that time standing with the Bible, the Hebrew English Bible, walking with groups, going, taking them up to the ridge, looking over Joseph's tomb, the overlook, looking at the city of Shechem, explaining. 
And each time I said, you know, it's good to stand with people and to give them lectures, but still, uh, we need to give them service because people need to eat, to drink, you know. So that's what we started with, and the government of Israel had a big problem with it at the beginning. It took us off the land, and we came back to the land, and again it took us off, and we had to move again to these 20 meters to here, 20 meters to there. All right, bureaucracy. So us Jewish people, believe me, we're not going to ask for, for forgiveness from the nations of the world, because we know what's supposed to be done. But we have to stand strong. We have to be strong for our nation, for our people, and that's why we are here. We came up to live off the land, to live in our heartland of Israel, as regular Israelis that want to settle up anywhere else in the land. And it's very, very interesting to understand by you guys and your questions asking me the periods of time that brought us up to this mountain and opening up the place. And of course, we enlarged the place. Thank the Lord. Uh, Last year, we did uh, here, I think, 200 square meters for more people to come, for buses of people to have a place to be here, beautiful wine bar, and, and nice air conditioning, and, and beautiful food that's coming out. Today, we had a Brit Milah, really? circumcision here in our, in our diner, wow, wow. in our place. Uh, uh, they did it in a synagogue in the settlement and came to feast here. They had wine and, and, and meat, and we're rejoicing. Beautiful. It's awesome. It's awesome. Now you're talking about a lot of growth. You're talking just so many different aspects of your life and how things have, have started in hardship, but then they've grown into beautiful things. And with that, I want to ask you, what about your family? How has your family grown? How many children do you have? What's their names? All these things. I think all right. Love well, uh, well, firstly, we, we have a Mazal Tov. You know, Hashem has blessed us just now before the Shemitah year, mm -hmm. just in the Shemitah year, excuse me, uh, last month with a baby girl. Her name is Geffen. <laughs> Geffen is a vine. Yeah. And uh, we have six children today. And uh, the eldest is an uh, is, uh, eighth, uh, twelfth grader. She's finishing high school this year, Tohar. And uh, our, our next after is Oz. Oz is uh, braveness. Tohar is uh, purity. And uh, he's also went to the academy school. Uh, of the Air Force, uh, Air Force of Israel. And uh, we have now um, uh, El Ad, El Ad Yitzchak. Uh, he's a seventh grader. We're learning in Elon More, close. And we have uh, Anava. Anava is, uh, I'll tell you the, the, the explanation for the names. El Ad is God forever. May God be with us forever. And Anava is uh, humbleness, humbleness. Anava, and she's a sixth grader, and we have uh, Tama. Tama Naomi is uh, innocent, innocence, yeah. And Baruch Hashem, these are our children, all born in Har Bracha, except for Toa coming here two months after she was born. So when my fellow Palestinian comes to me when I'm working my vineyards and tells me from the other village, listen, you robbed my land, you've taken my land, I tell him why. He tell me all my children were born in my village. And I tell him the same. All my children <laughs> were born here in my settlement. What's what's the difference? What's the difference? Yeah. I think the thing I want to take from here is, is I want to go one step deeper. And I want to know what, what are your feelings of the future? What are your feelings? What is your dreams? What is when you when you sit back and you think, Nir Levi wants to see, with God's help, what is the future for this place? I would like to see the city of Shechem, lived by Israelis. I would like, I'll start even from the beginning. I would like to see the Oslo, uh, if we're talking realistic and, and uh, you know, I'm also a Middle Eastern uh, study scholar from the University of Ariel and uh, from the Bar Ilan University also. Um, and uh, I would like to say that in 1993-94, when we started the Oslo conventions, that was very bad for us to do. It only brought hardship on us. But, like we said, Hashem will come to us or in hardship or in a pleasant way. It depends. If we choose the, the hardship way, then what's going to happen is that it's going to bring the Mashiach even faster. So, you know, but what I'm saying is I would like, you're asking me my vision. I would like these things to go away, to come back to realistic, to regular life. The only thing about the wine I really would like to say is that the wine brings us back to our roots 
And that's also something that I acknowledge in time and understand why I have to grow vineyards and why I'm, I'm acting with the vineyards and not acting with other fruits. Because the, mo the most understanding from, 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 from uh, wines and from, and from uh, vineyards is roots, the roots. These are trees that look like a root, even if you look at them. They look like a root, this untamed root. I mean, later on during the season, they have the flowers and they have the leaves. But when you're looking now, they look like a root that's on top of the earth. And, and this, this root is, is our root. You know, we're coming back to our roots. And Hashem is going to keep us on the land because we're coming back to our roots. If we want to get our roots somewhere else and to leave our roots, He'll give us. Hashem's word, you know, we, you're, you're, it's your decision. It's our decision, right? It's, it's Hashem, you know, the world is big and vast. We, we can decide for ourselves. But if we want to get connected to our roots, this is the only way to make wines, to grow uh, vineyards, to grow um, olive trees in, in Shomron, to come back to our roots and to make wines like the prophecy says in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 31. You shall plant vines, you shall drink the wines. These are, these are you know, uh, actions that are happening in our history, in our uh, new age history, in time. And, and we're, we're, we're thankful to Hashem that has given us the blessing to do so. With the visitor center and Baruch Hashem, with all, with all the growth, Baruch Hashem, bless us.